Hello and welcome to another Oblivion Plays FSX review video where today I will be reviewing the A2A Comanche 250. I would like to thank A2A for giving me the opportunity to review this aircraft which was released on the 18th of June. Today I will be providing an overview of the background of the aircraft and why A2A decided to use it, a bit about the installation, the features that are included with the product, a look at the modelling inside and outside the aircraft and then I will be doing a flight demo which will hopefully provide an overview of all the features that I've described beforehand. And then I'll finish off with a description of the price and availability of the aircraft, some of the system requirements, and then complete this review with the conclusion. So to start this review, I would like to talk a little bit about the background to the aircraft and why A2A decided to create the Comanche in particular. The manual that comes with the aircraft is incredibly comprehensive about the history of the plane and why A2A chose it. Um, there's 24 pages on the history and development of the Comanche 250 and there's also a page on why A2A chose to model it. But in summary, um, the aircraft was developed by William T. Piper to compete with the Beechcraft Bonanza which was dominating the post-war general aviation market and did so for over a decade. The Comanche began its development in 1957 and took inspiration and help from Mooney, in particular from the Mooney M20. And this was in order to design an aircraft that had high cruise performance for the available power, which was a stereotypical um, characteristic of Mooney aircraft. It also had to have a relatively simple light airframe and components which um, were economical to manufacture, allowing the Piper to greatly undercut the Bonanza's high price. It also needs to have a spacious cabin and modern looks. In regards to technology, it also brought in um, a novel technology called the Lamina Flow Aerofoil. Um, and this was safer than a Bonanza's wing, um, which had military heritage to it, i.e. Um, it encouraged speed over safety. But as a result, at low speeds, it was dangerous and um, had some rather harsh characteristics, particularly for aviators with little experience. Whereas the Comanche's Lamina Flow Airfoil encouraged speed, but also had a very tame stall, with lift decreasing very slowly as speed decreases and yet it still managed speeds that matched or were better than Bonanza at most altitudes. A2A's historical analysis concludes that the Comanche was a superior aircraft in every count, and subsequently it was able to compete effectively with the Bonanza. But why exactly did A2A decide to use it? Um, well, they decided that why not simulate something that they already had access to? They had already bought a Comanche in order to meet their needs for transporting equipment and moving around the country. So they decided, well, why not simulate this aircraft? This would allow them to provide the incredible detail um, that they were able to put into this model and accurately test the flight dynamics and help develop their AccuSim simulation engine. Although I've provided a very brief background, if you'd like to watch a little bit more about how A2A developed their aircraft, then please do watch their uh, development video, the link of which is in the description below. The A2A Comanche installer package is very straightforward. It's a self-contained executable file and there's relatively few options that you have to choose during the installation. You just have to make sure that Flight Simulator isn't running. And it is a double package, so it includes the aircraft and the AccuSim expansion pack. So you do need to make sure that you update the AccuSim expansion pack from the A2A website at the end of the installation. You just need to choose the destination folder and then begin the installation. One problem I did find when I reinstalled the Comanche was that the antivirus software that I have installed did pick it up as a virus, so I suggest that you disable your antivirus software at the start of the installation. You will also be offered to update your DirectX, though I suspect most of you will already have an up-to-date DirectX and will not need to install this. I will now discuss the features of the Comanche 250, and in order to do this in a logical way I'll divide it into five sections. So that'll be physics, immersion, modelling, realism, and the documentation. In regards to physics, A2A have added a new feature to their AccuSim model, and this is what they've termed aircraft DNA. This technology recreates the actual engine and airframe vibrations, which you can see here. I'll demonstrate this better um, when I do the demo flight. The second feature is that of the dynamic ground physics, which include different physics for both the hard pavement and soft grass. And they've modelled this both with the sound that you can hear, which is slightly different for both. And you can hear the suspension giving away differently on each of the surfaces. And they've also included different effects. So although there isn't a huge amount to see on hard pavement, as you can see here on the grass, they've added this ground effect where the 
and the tyres are kind of picking up dirt which if you compare to the default Cessna um, you can see is different. A2A have worked very hard to make the AccuSim model and in particular this Comanche 250 very immersive. The first of which is the pre-flight inspection system, which apparently was designed by pilots while operating the actual Comanche 250. In addition to doing the pre-flight walk around, in which you can actually test certain parts of the plane, check the fuel, check the oil, make sure there's no corrosion on the moving parts, the parts actually are modelled to corrode and fail according to temperatures and the amount of use, even when the computer is turned off. The second part I'd like to talk about is the hand towing system. When you bring up the control panel, you'll see this red T-shaped icon to the right. If you click this, it starts the towing system. What you use is your flight yoke, and you can hand push the aircraft with a lot more control than the default shift P pushback system. There is also a complete maintenance hangar, which simulates all the internal systems and includes engine tests and compression checks. And as you can see, you can also change the aerodynamic features of the plane, add on the external fuel tanks, change the battery's tyres. And then there's a full engine servicing section where you can change the oil, change the spark plugs and complete a compression test and the results of which are visually represented and also the compression test is written down in your notepad. You can also undertake a complete overhaul should your aircraft need it. In regards to the modelling features that A2A have introduced, they've included an authentic Bendix King avionics stack such as the KMA26 audio panel, two KX155A nav comms panels, the KT76E transponder, KN62A DME, and a two-axis autopilot with altitude pre-selection. There are also three in-sim avionics configurations, including no GPS, GPS 295, or the GNS 400. And there's also built-in automatic support for 3D party avionics. These can be changed in the GPS section of the aircraft configurator. This includes the default, Reality XP, Flight One, and Mindstar GPSs. There is also a visual real-time load manager with the ability to change the load for fuel, people and baggage in real-time and as you can see the aircraft sags under the weight of the different passengers and fuel. And this also allows you to increase or decrease the oil level as well. A2A have also completely modelled the Lycoming 540 engine, which fully simulates the internal combustion that occurs within the engine, such as in real life. What's interesting is that the gauges actually reflect what's happening within the simulated engine, more so than any other FSX aircraft. This means you have to treat the engine as if it was a real engine. So for example, you can't just start the engine and go, you need to warm it up appropriately, usually for about four minutes. And you also have to consider your external environment. For example, if it's cold, you might find that the oil is particularly viscous, so you may have issues with the pressure. And if the engine isn't treated correctly, it could overheat, which damages the cylinders. So you really have to respect the engine and treat it as if it was the real deal. As with many aircraft now, um, and what is expected with up-to-date add-ons is that the aircraft comes with a volumetric pellet, which helps add realism to the aircraft, as a 2D prop really doesn't cut it. The realism doesn't end with just the engine though. Airflow, density and its temperature not only affect the way your aircraft flies, but also how the internal systems operate. Authentic drag from the airframe and flaps can also be heard and felt. The battery is also accurately modelled, so the battery capacity is based on temperature, and the major draw is obviously from the engine starting, so should you fail to start the engine multiple times, you'll find yourself with a flat battery. System failures are also modelled. For example, if you were to deploy your flaps at too high a speed, as you can see here, you can see that very dangerous consequences can occur. As with all A2A aircraft, the Comanche comes with a very comprehensive 102 page manual. Because it's so highly simulated, you can essentially treat it as a real aircraft and therefore the information provided reflects this. 
The different sections of the manual include a background and history, which they've entitled Dynamic Elegance. The developer's notes, which explains why they chose to model the Comanche. A quick start guide. A description about AccuSim. Normal procedures. Performance and weight tables. Emergency procedures. And the last section is on maintenance and service. I will now discuss the modelling and texture quality of the indoor model. You can see here that the texture quality is excellent. I'm not sure what the resolution of the textures are, but certainly on a 1080p monitor they look sharp and detailed. a 2 have used what they've called pure 3D instrumentation, um, which gives a natural 3D appearance and the performance is really good. Um, we've already seen a close-up of the uh, instruments and you can see this very well. But this entrance detail is brilliant and you can see kind of the seat belts and everything is modelled to a high level in the back. There's also this uh, pop-up map, which is a small detail, but very useful, so you don't have to go into the FSX map. And there's different options, which allow you to change the map according to what you need. For example, VOR towers, airports, airways, add or remove your flight plan, and more. The night lighting of the internal cockpit is also really good. It has a very natural feel. And there's also um, an overhead light. And they've also included this red light, which the A2A crew explained as one of Fiber's many trademarks. The exterior model matches the quality of the interior model, and the textures equally are incredibly detailed, as you can see here. A2A have textured the skin of the aircraft to show some use and wear. For example, if you look at the step zone on the wing, you notice there's some mud from the pilot and or passengers. And it's this kind of attention to detail which really brings this aircraft to life. There's also reflective textures where appropriate. And because this aircraft has been modelled and textured from one of A2A's aircraft, in particular this livery, it really feels like a real and used aircraft. The animations are also of excellent quality and as are the sounds that go with them. So here you can see the gear going up. There's a slight amount of juddering, um, but this is hardly noticeable. The ailerons and flaps are also well modelled. As are the elevator and rudder. The A2A Comanche comes with four liveries. The first one here is A2A's aircraft, 29er Papa. Then there's this blue and white livery. This white, red and blue livery. And lastly, this red, brown and white one. The night lighting is also incredibly detailed with 3D lights built into the model, as you can see. So there's kind of a volumetric um, landing light effect. And um, this rear light, I'm not quite sure why um, there's kind of squares around it. It could be my system, um, but uh, that's certainly one minor kind of niggle with the aircraft. But as you can see, the beacon is really well modeled, as is the strobe. Lastly, if you press Shift 3, it brings up a controls menu where you have various options for the aircraft. So for example, under the miscellaneous um, options, um, there's things like control locks, putting headphones on the pilot, and also even sunglasses. And you can also put down the ground equipment, such as the wheel chocks, tie downs. Um, you can add an engine heater if you, ha if you have it. You can empty the plane, you can open the doors, put on the pito cover and um, charge the GPS battery. There's also the electric panel and you can put the aircraft on, on jacks if you so wish where you can test the landing gear and then there's a, you turn on the various lights and change the autopilot options. There's a cold and dark setting, there's the auto start, uh, volume settings, automatic C&D and, um, and you can also change the aircraft so it's used or and you can turn um, damage on and off or you can reset the aircraft um, back to brand new. Alright so welcome to the flight test section of this review. Uh, as you noticed on the top left I've kept the frame counter um, up just so that you can see the performance as I'm going along. But if you press shift 2 um, it brings up this pilot's notes section 
um, which is actually quite uh, quite informative. It comes with all uh, A2A aircraft, or certainly the Accusum ones that I've got. So it tells you some information about the outside temperature, the cabin temperature, um, some more kind of speed, range, fuel um, information, and then um, the power settings as well. So what you need to set for um, to, uh, how to, how to set, set the power for takeoff, the climb powers, and the, and the cruise powers, which is quite useful. You know, it's just a quick reference. And then there's a notes section as well. Um, so on this section, it's just giving you some uh, general tips on um, how to start the aircraft, what to do when you're kind of running along the ground. As you can see, it says to avoid fouling plugs because they've um, simulated the spark plugs so that if you have the mixture too rich and the throttle too uh, too low, so I, I, you're almost idling it, you'll foul the plugs. Um, and this, uh, you, you, well, you can see this when you're going through the, um, the power-up um, section of the, of the pre-flight test, and when you switch to the right and left magneto, um, you'll notice a drop in RPM. Um, and then there's some speeds. And then there's the upon entering cabin checklist. So I'll work through everything just so you get a feel for how, what it's like to fly this plane. I'll do a circuit. This is Gloucestershire Airport. Um, I'll do a stall test just to show you kind of what the um, flight dynamics are like. And I'll show, I'll show you um, aircraft, the aircraft DNA, um, which is this new feature that A2A have brought to this aircraft. So uh, first of all, we need to do the pre-flight. So that's shift eight. Um, so it tells you to remove this bungee cord, which you do, it's just a little click spot where they connect. Stick the master switch on. Fuel quantity, and um, we need to first of all select the, uh, the, the left and right tanks, and then it shows you the fuel quantity. Um, and then you can switch the master switch off, though um, what it doesn't say here, which what, what I advise is just to switch the pitot heat on, because when you get to the pitot heat uh, part on the plane, um, when you, you actually physically check, uh, touch it during the pre-flight inspection um, and it will just tell you whether it's hot and that, that's the kind of way you test whether it's working or not. So um, mass switch off, pitot heat off, mass switch off, ignition is off and then the flaps extend. And then you click on the, the, the right hand arrow and this moves you to the next section. Uh, if you have uh, easy dock, um, you might have some issues with where the camera's pointing, um, but as long as you center it in the cabin, it should be roughly in the right position and you might just have to move the, the viewpoint. But anyway, just check that the flaps are secure. You can check the, um, the flap um, moving parts, make sure they're not corroded. Uh, so you check for um, the aileron uh, for proper movement, although that's actually not simulated for some reason. Um, though, like it is with the flap, though you in real life you just move it basically. And then again, just check for any corrosion, and then you can move to the end. Um, so you just check the lights, obviously, and then check the. Oh, we haven't put any fuel in. So if you put some fuel in, um, it's shift four. Oh, that's because I haven't filled up the tip tank. So if we just fill up a little bit in the tip tanks. There we go, fill them up to about half. You can then uh, see that the fuel is in there, it looks, looks relatively clean, not um, contaminated in any way, and then we can just double check that by actually extracting some fuel. Landing light, we just need to inspect, and that looks fine. We need to remove this tie down and remove the chocks, and then we can just check that the tire is properly inflated and um, there's no kind of damage to it. Um, they don't actually simulate damage with the tire, as far as I'm aware. And then again, just check the uh, the right hand fuel tank and the quality and again check the tire but well, having said that it does have um, a real world tip which is separate and it does say proper inflation condition so maybe maybe it does I haven't had a situation where it does show damage and then check the propeller for damage and security and um, the inlets as well just make sure they're not obstructed I'm not quite sure what this does, because if you click it, I can't visibly see anything happening. Um, and then you can check the oil level, make sure it's at the appropriate level and it's nice and well relatively clean. And then it gives you some tips about when to change it. And then just check fuel on the left wing, move the, t the chocks and the tie down. Uh, check that the store warning vane is working. And then again, this is, this is where you remove the pito cover and then hold it. It's actually, but <laughs> since we've um, uh, turned it off, it's cooled down. But you can, if you want to double check it, you can switch the mass heat and pito heat back on again. Left landing light inspect. 
this is all basically the same, it's just a mirror of the right hand side. Check for corrosion, check the flap, check for corrosion. Um, again, the static source opening, which is just here. Um, I can't actually see anything happening when you click it. And then remove the rear tie down, check for corrosion in the, um, the elevator uh, joints. Check for some corrosion in the, uh, I've seen that's a rudder. Check the elevator for um, movement and security. And then just <laughs> double check that the baggage door's locked. We well, wouldn't want that to open halfway through the flight. And that's it, back into the cabin. So as you can see, it's actually fogged up a little bit. So we need to get some uh, ventilation in. But uh, so we can close the pre-flight inspection, go back to shift two. So you're supposed to brief the passengers, make sure that seatbelts and harnesses are on. Flaps we can bring back up now. Check the circuit breakers are in and they're found here and they are simulated. So you just can pop them back out and pop them back in again. Just double check that they're working. Uh, all electrical switches should be off, which they are. Um, you can turn the rotating beacon on. If you want to remove the yoke, you just click that button and then uh, the rotating beacon is this one. Uh, the carb heat is off. The fuel selectors, we've already selected the desired tank. And the gear lever, it's always in the off position. If you bring in that mixture, so you can see it's in the off position. So you just drag that down and it goes into the down position. So you need to crack the throttle. So just bring it up. Well, on my throttle, it's about a third of the way in, um, but you saw it was a couple of inches in. Mixture, make sure it's enriched. And if you actually listen, there's a little kind of attention to detail sound for like them. Uh, the prop, make sure that's in. And the master switch on. Gear lever, lights are green. Fuel pump on, which is this yellow button. And we're just looking at that fuel pressure, making sure it goes up. Which it is. Uh, engine make primes. So it's a relatively warm day, so it'll only be a couple of um, primes. So it's not that one, it's this one. So you do need to actually prime the engine. Um, so it's all as real as it gets. Um, mags switch over to both. It doesn't have a start on uh, with this ignition, it's got a separate starting button. Uh, and then make sure it's clear. Shout prop clear. And um, and then you can engage the starter. And there we go, the engine's on. So as I said in the the feature section, we just need to wait for the um, all the temperatures and pressures to go up. You see the oil pressures come up nice and quickly, which is encouraging. Like I said, if, it, if it's cold, it might go up um, particularly high. So you just need to kind of be, be cautious of that. Actually, since, I think since I've opened this little vent, um, the windows have cleared up, which is quite nice. There you go, these dynamic sounds, so it's all very realistic. And in fact, if you stick in the headphones, you notice it goes really quiet. Again, it's all these little little touches, which I really do like with the with A2A aircraft. So we also just need to check the amateur. Which I believe... Uh, kicks in at a certain point. Let me just see. I think it kicks in at over a thousand. The uh, the alternator, maybe it's a little bit higher. Or maybe it's just working. I'm sure I've heard somewhere that it, that the amateur only kicks in after a certain RPM. But anyway, it's idle uh, just over 800, so probably around about well 900ish. You can see these vibrations coming in. This is all the this, this aircraft DNA. And then we can lean out the mixture, because otherwise we will foul the plugs. There we go. And then we can move on to the next page, which is the taxi page. So first of all, um, we'll make sure that all the uh, temperatures are in the green. So we'll just let the oil temperature come up a little bit, and the cylinder temperatures come up a little bit, and then I'll, um, I'll join you again in a minute. It'll be a few minutes time. Okie dokie, so it's been a couple of minutes now. Um, what the manual suggests is it's two minutes if it's a warm day, which it is today, or four minutes if it's a if it's a particularly cold day. 
Um, but you can see the oil temperature starting to creep up and the well, the cylinder head, cylinder head temperature has gone up a, a tiny amount, but hopefully it'll be in the green by the time we're, we're ready to take off. But uh, if we move over to the next checklist, uh, we just need to get the radios on. Turn on the DME and the GPS. If uh, you get a little battery icon with the GPS, what you need to do is press Shift 3 and this button will be highlighted and I guess it's to recharge the uh, the, the battery. Um, although I'm not sure if, it, if you leave it for a certain amount of time whether the um, alternator will, uh, will recharge it. Um, that's something I have yet to find out. Uh, but let's go on to ATIS and just find out which is the active runway at Gloucester today. In the meantime, I'll just press B to uh, set the altimeter. Winds are 173. Runway 9 in use. Okay, so that's a bit of a taxi. But that's fine, I'll give an opportunity for the engines to warm up. So next page, um, which is the run-up test. So uh, we'll do that just before um, the, take, the, the runway. So release the parking brake and let's get going. We'll just have a listen out for uh, some of the the ground physics, which I mentioned in the uh, in the feature section. But if we move around the cockpit, you can hear the the sounds kind of changing around a bit. Just turn right here. You can hear the, the wheels kind of bouncing about. And the engine sounds are just brilliant. You can almost hear the, the prop, um, well, the wind, I guess, from the prop uh, moving against the airframe. Alright, so we're just coming up to the runway now, um, but I just thought I'd take this opportunity to pretty much say every single thing in this cockpit um, is animated or, or modelled. It's quite impressive. And um, even like the, the emergency gear release you can use, all these little side buttons, all the vents and everything. The, it, the attention to detail and the effort they put in to make sure everything's set. I mean, even these little vents at the back, you can click. <laughs> It's, uh, it's quite incredible, the, the detail they've gone into this aircraft. But anyway, so we're coming up to the runway now, and what we'll need to do is do what's called a run-up test, where we'll point the uh, the aircraft into wind. So we're looking for 1.7, uh, which will be just, well, pretty much behind us. Just go up a little bit closer, but you can see the aircraft kind of juddering as we're going along. Um, the, the ground physics quite, aren't quite as pronounced as they are on grass, but you're still getting this kind of effect you get as if you're bouncing over kind of bumps in the concrete. But uh, let's just stop round about here and turn into the wind. That'll do. And make sure we're, ooh, we went a little bit low there, but keep it above 800. Right, so we hold the brakes down. I'll put the parking brake on just so I can do kind of multiple things at once. Um, we want to select the desired tank, which is which we have, and the fuel quantities are fine. If you want to see the auxiliary fuel tank um, that gauge, it's down here. That's for the uh, the wing tips. So um, set the throttle 2,000. There's a bit of a juddering, so I might have fouled the plugs a little bit. seem to be settling now. I mean you can see the little dials, it's so... it feels so real. Um, but uh, otherwise we just look at all the indicators and that's looking fine. Everything's pretty much in the green. So the head temperature is coming up now. And then we can check the magneto. So bring it down. So that was, that was less than 125. That was just about 125 and then we'll go up to the other one. And there was hardly any drop there, so the left one's probably a little bit fouled. 
otherwise that's fine. And then we want to cycle the prop. And I understand this is done to uh, to move the oil around the prop because the way that the, um, the prop governor works and the um, the constant speed propeller um, means that the oil needs to kind of circulate around. So we'll just do that one more time. Uh, and then uh, just check the carb heat as well. Just make sure that's working. You should just see a little RPM drop. There we go. And that's pretty much good to go, so we'll just bring that right down now. I think we're slightly creeping forward then. Um, just avoid going on the grass, we'll just go to the left. It's a bit of differential brake, swing us round. And uh, let's do our before takeoff. So just make sure all the controls are free and correct. Yeah, we've got a bit of a dip there, so we know the elevator's working. And uh, stick the fuel pump on. Make sure the car heat is off, which it is. Make sure we can bring it to rich now. Prop's fine. And the engine gauges are all looking good. Everything's in the green now. Just bring one third of flap down. And make sure the doors latch, which it is. Whoops. Uh, the trim's up here, so to make sure we're down at neutral. my joystick buttons, that's better. So just bring it right down to neutral. And then uh, just slowly apply throttle. So we're looking for about, I think it's 85 knots for rotate. And then about night wise, it's 90 to 120 for, uh, for the climb. There we go. Bring that gear up. Just trim up a bit. Now you've kind of had an impression of the engine sounds. I'll just put in the headphones just so it's a little bit quieter so you can uh, hear me. And bring the flap up. And just uh, bring the prop out to about 24 RPM, 24,000 RPM. Ooh, that's a little bit too much. You can see this vibration of the uh, the aircraft DNA. And then the climb, so it's fuel pump off now, so we've, we've gone above a thousand feet, just check the fuel pressure, that's still in the green, and then bring this manifold pressure down, right, right down to about 24. Still ahead, temperatures are fine, and we won't bother leading it just yet because we're not going to be really flying, we're just going to be doing a circuit, but um, I'll just show you some of the um, the, uh, well, the features that I didn't get kind of get a chance to show you, but so this this um, aircraft DNA. So at the moment we're about twenty four thousand. Just bring that up. We notice the vibration. There's a little bit of vibration, but not too much. But if we just bring that down, look at that vibration now. So it's the engine. Um, oh, bird over there. An eagle flying up with us. Um, so the engine isn't quite as happy, but if we bring it back down, all the way down to 18, I think it's around about 18,000 is the next sweet spot. And there we go, the vibrations are gone. So the whole point of this is it's it's allowing you to get a feel for where the engine's happiest. So when you're up in the cruise, um, if you want to have a, kind of a slow cruise, you can bring the engine back down to 18,000. Or if you wanted to fast cruise, bring it back up to 24,000. And the engine's happy there as well, because, the, I mean, everything's... A lot smoother than where it was in about halfway, halfway between. So that's aircraft DNA. So you're getting this kind of almost feedback from the engine and the aircraft uh, about where's the sweet spot for uh, for it working the best. 
And then if you want to hear some of these uh, these drag effects, I'll just bring the uh, speed right down. And I'll do a stall test. And uh, I'll just drop a notch of flap so you can hear a bit of drag. I'll actually get rid of the head headphones now, just so you can hear it a lot clearer. So I'll drop a notch of flap. But there you go, you hear the drag? It's not quite as pronounced with one uh, one notch, but so you heard it when I kind of pulled back to, back on the elevator, so you heard it over the airframe. But I'll do a store test, and um, you'll, you'll notice what happens in a second. So there's the judder. And there we go, drops the wing. And if you, um... Ooh, that's a bit of a... A bit of a nasty recovery. Um, but if you watch the video that I've linked, he... The owner of uh, the A2A, um... I think he, he might be the, the, the manager of A2A, actually, or the director of A2A. He demonstrates what it's like in the real aircraft, and it is exactly like that. So the right wing drops, and the aircraft spins. I think that was a bit, bit more violent. I, I mean, I initiated quite a violent stall and spin then, and didn't recover it very well. But uh, you got the idea. I mean, the, the flight laminates are brilliant, um, really accurate. I mean, if you did that with, uh, for example, one of the FSX D4 aircraft, it would just nose drop, um, and you don't really get that feel. So yeah, the, the flight dynamics, the, the aircraft flying is probably the most realistic um, aircraft I've ever flown. And um, when I, well, I've floated it for a few hours before I did this review and you feel incredibly immersed and uh, you don't get that with any other aircraft, so I'm really impressed with that. But anyway, I'll, uh, I'll complete the circuit and uh, go in for landing and I'll, I'll catch you in a bit. Alright, so we're just finishing up our downwind so we can start our approach landing checklist. Um, so you need to turn off the autopilot, and in case you're wondering where that is, it's actually on the yoke. And what's quite clever is if you turn the yoke off, the buttons move to this position. Um, you just need to switch the fuel pump on, and make sure the fuel levels well, are going to be fine, and we've only just been flying for a few minutes. Uh, the mixture is rich, and you'd lean it if it was over 4,000 feet. Reduce your speed down to 120 knots. So that little beep is the, uh, the gear up warning. So what you can actually do is what they've called the gump check, um, which is make sure, well, gas or petrol, so <laughs> pump test in the UK. Petrol or gas, um, make sure the selectors are on and that the fuel pump is on. Uh, undercarriage, we can get the undercarriage down now. Uh, and then the prop, prop to be in and the mixture in. So the M is the mixture, P is the prop, and then the seatbelt's on is the S. And then we can get one notch of flap down. And as we're moving into base, and get down to about 110 knots. And the second notch. Oops. A bit buffeted in the wind. And then if we turn into final and uh, slow right down to about 90. So we're just settling down now. Went a little bit fast for the flaps then, so it'd be interesting to see if I uh, actually damage them. Just getting rid of that for now. So uh, I want to be slowing down to about 90 now.
Got a bit of a crosswind. We we'll drop that last bit of bit of flat just to add a little bit of drag. Help us down. Just trim up a little bit. Maintain 90 knots. We fly over this golf course, which I can uh, tell you is actually there in real life. So I've played around that golf course before, and uh, we just come down right down. Puppy lights are uh, saying we're on, the, on getting close to the glide slope now. There we go. Just maintain that speed because we're losing a little bit. Maybe for that touchdown spot, and then idle off, and let it float down. There we go, those are really good sounds as the uh, tyres hit the tarmac. As so we just uh, use a bit of brakes that help slow us down. And there we go, back down on uh, Gloucestershire Airport. So make sure the flaps are up now, turn off the fuel pump, lean out the f uh, mixture a little bit, just make sure we're on about 800 ish RPM. And then neutral out the trim. Just making sure we don't go too far. There we go. And then we'll take this next right onto the, back onto the parking. And I'll be interested to see what damage I've done to the aircraft. Okay, and then we just bring the throttle back and uh, bring in that, bring out that mixture. And out it goes. And then we can switch off uh, the magnetos, turn off the radios. Oops, went too far on that one. I'll switch off. Everything else off. Probably could have put, <laughs> put my strobe on then, not to worry. Uh, and then we can secure, well, put the barking brake on. And then uh, secure the aircraft. Uh, where's the, that's control lock. <laughs> the improvised control lock. And then we put the chocks on and the tie downs. And let's see if we did any damage. So shift seven, let's have a look. Nope, it looks good. Looks like I haven't done anything, <laughs> which is all good. So it looks, although I did overspeed a little bit with those flaps, uh, it didn't look like it did any lasting damage. But beware, it does, it does simulate damage if you overdo it. But otherwise that's the end of the, uh, the flight test. The A2A command sheet is widely available at most online flight simulation stores, including the A2A website. It's currently priced at US$49.99, which is just under £32. This is a price that I think accurately reflects the effort and time that has gone into this aircraft, and therefore I think it's good value for money. If you found this review useful and therefore decided to buy the command sheet, I would be eternally grateful if you could buy it through the purchase link below, making sure to do so within 24 hours. Thank you. In regards to the computer specification requirements and performance, the command sheet is compatible with either Flight Simulator X or P3D, and the minimum system requirements aren't too demanding as you can see here. Unfortunately, unlike promised, I accidentally removed the frame rate counter during the in-flight test. So I thought I'd take the time now to show you the frames and performance of the A2A command sheet. I'll show you this at different locations and compare it to different aircraft. My system specifications are found in the description below for comparison. So first of all, we're here at Gloucestershire Airport, and you can see that the frame count averages around 30, 
to a minimum of approximately 20 and a maximum of approximately 40. If you compare that to the default Cessna, it's not faring too great. The Cessna averages around 70 frames. However, if you were to compare this to another add-on aircraft, such as the Carinado Cirrus SR-22, that only averages 25. So it is faring better than the Carinado, but the Cirrus does have 4K textures. If we move to a more demanding airfield, such as Fair Oaks, which has been simulated by Orbex, not only is the airport highly detailed, but it's also near London, so you have that additional draw on the frames. The Comanche doesn't fare too, too well here, it averages around 10 frames with a minimum of 8 and a maximum of 12, although this does improve when you move to the external view, but this is consistent across all aircraft. The Cessna at Fair Oaks averages around 14, and the Carinado Cirrus fares even worse at 8 frames. So overall, the performance of the aircraft is very average. When you consider the level of detail of the aircraft, actually this payoff isn't too bad, and overall I think they've optimised this aircraft very well. So in conclusion, A2A have developed a superb aircraft on top of an already excellent series, and the fact they managed to surpass their previous aircraft with new features really is an achievement. The two niggles I have discussed really do not undermine what is a highly detailed and enjoyable aircraft, and I'm sure they'll be fixed very easily in future patches. And as I said before, one of them could be a clash with my setup. Uh, for example, it could be a clash with the Didex 10 Fixer that got installed. Therefore, I can hardly fault this aircraft, and I am very happy to recommend this to you as a must-buy. You really won't be able to buy an aircraft that immerses you so completely in general aviation simulation. I thoroughly look forward to what they can develop in the future, but in the meantime, I'm looking forward to building up the hours in this beautiful aircraft. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit the like button, and if you'd like to watch more, then please subscribe. I'm open to suggestions, questions and tips, so do add anything in the comments section. And lastly, if you'd like up-to-date information on my streams and videos, then please follow me on Twitter and Facebook, the links of which you'll find in the description below, alongside details of add-on software and purchase links. Thanks very much, I'll see you next time.